Uh, Mark, Mark in Ontario, California. Oh, there you go, Mark. You're on. Yeah, hi. I'm uh, Mark. I'm a devout Christian. Haven't been all my life. I'm born again. I was actually, I led, I led a life of crime and, and everything else, and I was born again when I was a treatment center. This isn't the point I'm trying to make. I'm not getting into that, but I've heard you say a number of times you, you've looked at it and you can't find a reason to believe. I just wanted to touch on this a bit. Myself, I found a reason to believe because when I gave my life to Christ, my life changed, and I stopped committing crime, and I stopped doing drugs, and everything just started working out for me. That's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm simplifying it, and I'm saying, if you don't believe in a God, where did everything come from? Because it was just as ludicrous to believe that the Big Bang just happened, and everything just laid out, and the universe is just the way it is. I mean, cities don't just pop up out of the ground because two rocks bang together. There's geniuses that plan the, the, the construction of buildings. So how much more complicated is the universe? Crazy. <laughs> I've been talking for like ten minutes, so... Where do you believe everything came from, Mark? I believe that there's some all-powerful being. Maybe the Big Bang is the what he used. I believe there's some all-powerful being that chain react at the Big Bang, just like when we bring down buildings for precise explosions that made it happen and everything is the way it is because of this all-powerful being. Why do you believe that? Because I feel his presence within me. Like I said, I used to be a criminal. I used to be a drug user. I used to be all these bad things. And as soon as I let that being into my life, I was able to live a new life. Well, you do understand that people can change their lives for all manner of reasons, correct? Yeah. Okay, so some people do change their lives and they attribute it to religion, and some people change their lives and they're not religious, correct? I'm not saying, yeah, I know that. I know, I, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm just asking. Like I'm just making sure we're on the same page. So, you changed your life and you attribute it to religion. So, why do you attribute it to religion? Not so much religion, spirituality. Okay, why do you attribute it to spirituality? Because um, I believe that there's more than what we see, just like in the ocean, the, t the tip of the iceberg is only what you see on the surface, and there's so much more underneath. Why do you believe that? Because it just makes sense to me. It just feels right. It's so like you, you feel it's correct, but, but what, do you know why you feel it's correct? I don't know. It's like one of those things you can't explain. Like, you can't tell somebody why you love somebody. You just know in your heart that you do. But c can people be mistaken about the things that they know in their heart? Can a person know in their heart that their spouse is faithful and then find out they've actually been cheating? Yeah. Okay, I'm so... Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying... Some of the things that happen in, in the name of religion, like 9-11 and things like that, I, I totally disagree with that, and I think that's totally wrong. <laughs> Right. I agree. And, but I guess what I'm asking is, you said you know this because you feel it in your heart, and, but we agree that sometimes people feel things in their heart and it's their, their, the intuition is not right. So how do you know that what you feel is, is correct? Uh, honestly, it's, it's not something that I can explain or, or put into words. It's like to quote a famous movie, and, and I just say to quote it, so I'm not sure, feeling sure. it. No, I understand. Like, like Morpheus says to Neo, I can't explain what the, what the Matrix is to you. It's something you have to experience for yourself. Right, but, I mean, Morpheus didn't just rely on, on saying you have to have faith in it. He actually demonstrated that the Matrix happened, right? I, I mean, you know, and unless he had provided that evidence, then he could, he could very well have been just a crazy guy. Who, yeah, it's like, would, ne would Neil have believed it without the pill? Yeah, I mean, if Morpheus came up to me right now and, I, you know, and told me, actually, The Matrix is real and, and it was, the movie was a documentary, I wouldn't believe him, would you? No. Okay, the evidence for me was, like I said, I spent numbers of years in and out of jail. And what the turning point for me was, I'd seen numbers of people who I knew were hardened criminals, the toughest, roughest people you'd ever met or ever knew. So it wasn't just reading a book, it was people I knew personally. So, so we can agree they, that... They were like the Christ, so they became a totally new person, a totally 
Okay, so we can agree like, that when people adopt certain beliefs, uh, then uh, then often that uh, changes their lives because they act differently according to those beliefs. But does that mean that the beliefs are true? I mean, if I developed a serious belief in Islam and I stopped being a, cl a, a, um, a criminal as a result of that belief, you wouldn't think that Islam is true, would you? That's, that's a good point. That's a good point. You, you have a good point. My my brother, my brother Rick, is actually the one that turned me on to to the atheist experience, and he did warn me that you guys would have some stifling questions and points. I'm not trying to stifle you. I mean, I just think you know you called in and you'd like to convince us that your your point of view is right, or at least so explain I'm it so that yeah. I mean, you just called in to talk to us about what you believe and why you believe it, um, and that yeah, and so that's fine. I mean, I understand what you believe and I understand what's driving that belief I just question whether that is valid um, because I mm. do know that what people feel sometimes is incorrect it's incorrectly interpreted of course you feel what you feel but the cause of that feeling sometimes isn't what you think it is and sometimes like what I was talking about with infidelity a person can can feel in their heart that my spouse would never cheat on me my spouse is faithful to me and they believe that but then they find out that their spouse has been cheating and having an affair for the last year. And this happens. Mm. So feelings can, e even though the person felt honestly that their spouse was um, being faithful and that, that was true of them to say that that's how they felt and that they had confidence in that, sometimes that's not really, you know, the confidence is misplaced. Or the, the reason for the confidence isn't that, that the, the interpretation of the event is correct or the interpretation of the feeling. Okay, so what what are your guys' thoughts and, and feelings and beliefs on the on the spiritual side of uh, humanity and being human? I don't really. I ask people when they call in to tell me how they define spiritual because I don't know what the word means. Yeah, that's you're you're right. That is a very vague because uh, I don't mean like like um, religious. I mean like. Just knowing that there's there's more to us than just flesh, blood, and bone. Like, do you know that? Well, um, what, what about the seven ounces? I think it is the Six what? Ounces, seven ounces. Oh, oh heard, you're talking about the the like some of number of people. grams. Uh, disappear or the, the human body loses a certain number of grams when they die, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it's kind of funny because actually somebody just wrote to me about this last week, uh, and I I actually went up and looked this thing up on Snopes, and apparently, I mean, this is a real experiment that somebody tried like one or two hundred years ago or so. Um, oh, okay. But but people, you know, people who have come in after him and and looked at how he did the study and compared it. Uh, uh, like like done it with proper experimental controls, found out that there were things that uh, that he were was doing wrong, which accounted for the lost weight. I think that I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but uh, well, but you said you found but, it on Snopes, right? Yeah, so Snopes, he can look this Snopes, up. Snopes, uh, look up. I, I think it's twenty one grams, isn't it? I think it's it's something like that. But I, I mean, it, it was something like uh, the bodies that he was studying. There were a small number of them, and they were all stored uh, in cold conditions, which bodies generally are, uh, and they lost moisture that way. Uh, and and then he compared it to doing a study on dogs under the principle that, that dogs don't have a soul, but then the dogs weren't stored in the same way as the people. So, I, I mean, it, it's interesting that, uh, I, I mean, th this sounds very convincing because it's in kind of a scientific framework, but if you're going to make a scientific style argument that there's a soul, then you have to be willing to accept the kind of scientific criticism which is routine. Well, but I would also add, if, if this spirit um, is physical, which right. it would have to be in order to account for actual measurable weight, then it should be identifiable physically, shouldn't it? Well... I'm not, because I'm a born-again Christian, I'm not like an atypical Christian who denies, like, certain facts. Like, I 
totally know the world has been in existence for 4 billion years, not okay. just 6,000 years. Well, no, I guess what I'm trying like to, that, uh, excuse like, me, what I'm trying to ask is, <clears throat> if a person did lose weight after they died, wouldn't that indicate that whatever was lost was physical? Because physical mass has weight, correct? Yeah. So in that case, the person would be describing the soul as a physical thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so is that spiritual or is that a physical thing? And if, the, if, if there's a, a loss of physical mass, shouldn't then, if that's a soul, shouldn't it be physically identifiable while we're alive? Like, shouldn't we be able to physically identify the soul as a part of the body if it has physical mass? <laughs> yeah, that's... that's Okay, that's, that's a good starting point. I, okay. guess, I guess when, when we ask what are the reasons you believe, um, you know, go, going at it from a scientific point of view is, is kind of a good thing to do. And it's not because science is something we, natu we automatically trust or, or, you know, science is our religion, like I was saying earlier. Um, you know, that's not the case. It's just that science is kind of an attempt by humans to, to sort of admit that we are all fallible uh, and that, like Tracy was saying, the things that we believe, even if we really, really believe them, uh, are, aren't always true. Um, and so, you know, we, we ask ourselves the question, I know I'm capable of error, so how would I go about uh, finding out for sure, c coming up with some kind of verification? A and the idea of going after, you know, of measuring a soul or, or even thinking of a test to measure a soul is a good start. But, I mean, you have to follow all, all the principles that make, is to make sure that, that your test is really objective and not just steering you toward what you want to think is true. You see what and, I'm saying? And you'd also have to have a pretty good definition for a soul to know what it was exactly that you were looking for. Yeah, true, true. Okay. Um, okay, just one more, one more thing, because you're, you're talk, we're talking about scientists and stuff here. Like, I just wanted to mention this too. C.S. Lewis, I'm sure you know who that is, right? Sure. Yes. He set out, he, he was a scientific mind, a great scientific mind from his time. He, he set out he wasn't a to scientist, disprove you know. the existence of God, and in his trek to disprove the existence of God, he ended up becoming one of Christianity's greatest supporters. How? What, what was phenomenon? the evidence? What was the evidence that changed his mind? I know that C.S. Lewis. I really enjoy his fiction. <laughs> the things he considers nonfiction, not so much. But if he was this great scientific mind, then what was the evidence, as far as you know, that that made him a, the a Christian? Well, from what I understand, the um, the Alpha series. I don't know if you know anything. If you know about the Alpha series or not? Nicky Gumbel, the Alpha series. He quotes C.S. Lewis a lot. From what I understand, in his track to disprove God, he found that there is a big emptiness and that there is no purpose or meaning to our existence without the existence of God. So okay, wait, wait a minute. Therefore, wait a minute. Do you, un do you know that there are many, many Buddhists that don't <clears throat> believe in God? Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> Okay, Buddhism does not rely on belief in a god. There is no god in Buddhism. And I, I'm pretty sure they have a very directed purpose and meaning to what they do. I mean, they have a, a specific philosophy that guides their life, um, but they don't have a god. So I don't agree that a person requires a god in order to have meaning and purpose. I mean, Buddhists are one example. I think anyone can do it, but they're a good example of a very you know, of a more structured group with a more defined belief system that um that doesn't incorporate a god. And humanists would be another kind of conglomerated group that has sort of like a directive to do what is best for, you know, humanity and I guess like the planet in general and things like that. So um, there are people who have purposes that are uh, direct purposes for helping the planet or helping people or doing the right thing while they're alive and not so focused, I guess, on the idea of, of God or appeasing a God. You also have deists who believe in a God but think that that God is not um, interacting with people at all and has no concern for us whatsoever. And those people believe in a God, but that God has nothing to do with any sort of meaning in their lives or directing their lives in any way. Hmm. Okay. 
I really sure. appre I appreciate the honest um, attitude in your call. I, yeah, I just want to tell you that. Um, and I mean, I think uh, maybe you ought to, um, you know, think think about it a little more and maybe call back another week. Uh, would that, well, would that well, be okay like with I you? Said, I'm open minded. Like that was sure. part of how I came my life that. too. I had to become open minded, open to new concepts and ideas and ways of thinking. So, no, yeah, I think that's good. Right. All right. Well, well, thanks. You've given me a lot to think about. Well, thank uh, you for your call. Yeah. Thanks. I uh, I hope you call back. Okay. Uh, talk to you later.